it seems that uh, Lillo Zano is a woman and above all an artist of paradox. So you spoke to me about that. What, what did you want to do in this exhibition showing about this paradox also? Can you explain what you wanted yeah. to do with this exhibition? Sure. So the exhibition, it's, this is a very good question because the exhibition really starts from General Strike Peace, which is a piece which very much talks about these contradictions. So we thought for such a complex practice, which goes in so many different, you know, different languages, how to find something that really clarifies that they are all very well connected and very cohesive. And Strike was really like the sort of key that we wanted to give to the exhibition. Because Strike is a choice of not working, but at the same time, it's a very uh, violent, Mm, expression of energy which goes throughout all of her work and which testifies also her reaction towards the art system at the time and all of the different art languages that were present at the time so she worked in the moment of pop art minimalism conceptual art but she always detached herself from them so mm, strike is really somehow connecting her artistic presence and her biography, which, as we said, is extremely important to understand her practice. So, she, for example, she's obsessed by sex, right? So, yeah, so if you read her pen, notebooks, it's... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of penis in, in, in the figurative paintings, mm -hmm. and later, when she's doing a abstraction, it's a reference, but even here, it's obviously <laughs> a reference to that. What's yeah. going on? What, what's a, a story about that? If I if I say one I say just one thing and then I'll uh, pass my the mic to <laughs> Sana. Um, something that is quite important is um, that even if she's clearly very much interested in experimenting uh, with sex and very open about it, very often both in her paintings and in the drawings, the sort of tradition that she tries to follow is the one of satirical art. So it's not really showing uh, naked bodies out of erotic art, but it's very often a satirical gesture. It's critical, it's pop, um, it's very much giving a commentary on society at large. So the phallus, the penis, really becomes a symbol very often. There is one drawing which is finally cut them off, you know? Really? That's not really erotic. It's sort of like an anarchist sort of utopia, you know? So um, it's, it's really against power, against power structures that she fights against. In all her life, everything is a, a fight against something. She doesn't want to be classified. She goes even against herself, in a way, by dropping out. She, it's like boycotting her career, uh, but actually it's not. It's very coherently pursuing an attitude and a will uh, which makes her disappear almost mysteriously and live mysteriously. But everything is years. about paradox. For example, she she wants to destroy this sign of power, but in the same time, you told me she has a very active sex life, and she yeah. writes about it. She she's yeah, yeah she classifies everything. She even the men she has the men she, sleep she sleeps with. with. She sometimes even choreograph uh, the her ex sex experience with men. So she's very bulimic from that point of view. But at the same time then, she fights against this consumption. She fights against drug consumption, which of course is something that's very pr present in her life. There's a moment where she even tries to stop eating. Uh, so everything is labor consumption and uh, discussing about the idea of artwork as a commodi commodity. Uh, she's always struggling for to get to find money, but at the same time, one of her conceptual pieces is offering money to the collectors who come <laughs> and buy her work. So everything is about contradiction. Is everything is about going against the expectations? Uh, so the expectations of art, the expectations of society. The but it's also self de destruction in a way. Uh, for yeah, sh for sure. But, I mean, she she was really uh, dependent on many things. Like when she drops out, she says that dropping out needs to be seen um, against the fact that she felt she wanted to be independent from, you know, both drugs, cigarettes. But she, has, she was having a lot of drugs? Yeah, she had uh, for sure uh, issues with drugs quite a bit and drugs are present in her work and also in her talking. Uh, oh. I mean, she talks about drugs, she experiments with it and describes 
her experiences through with drugs as much as she describes her sexual experiences. And she, she also wanted to stop with women. Yes, this is another uh, apparent contradiction. Uh, she, uh, it's very interesting though, because when she later, when she's not anymore visible, but she has some phone conversations only because nobody will ever see her basically wow. in these 30 years. She says, actually, I have nothing against women, but she keeps not talking to them. And so we didn't say it. She stopped talking to women except her mother. Except for her mother. She was dependent on her mother, on her family, mother and father. She goes back to live with them. And uh, of course, maybe even for practical reasons, she had to interact with the mother. <laughs> but she keeps being very coherent of not speaking to women. And she starts by not speaking to, or even opening the letter of Lucy Lippert, who was a friend and a supporter of her work. So it's always contradictions, contradictions. But it's, but it's also, sorry, the, um, just to add something about the, the story of not talking to women, it's also very consistent of the social period in which these works are um, insert, you know, like it was a moment in which she, the, the exhibition at the Whitney Museum in 71 sort of, you know, consecrated her as a great artist, but at the same time, she was tokenized. She was, you know, the Whitney Museum was saying that she was there because she was a woman artist, and that was something that she could she not didn't. accept. She mm. didn't want to be present in the art system because she was a woman. And this is something that was really present in all of that generation of women struggling with this wave of feminism, in the fact of accepting feminism sort of accepting as something which you know it's accepting of not being part of the real world of the guys you know so mm -hmm. it's a it's quite um common for women in that period of time not accepting to be women so the choice of calling herself lee was something that other women were doing at the time it was really not accepting the sort of um, identity of woman because women didn't have any power at the time so this is and the then uh, exactly and and then another contradiction for somebody that makes art her life and her life art you know because the two things as as Lucy Lippard in a very with a very nice sentence puts it uh, with this such uh, importance that art had in her life and with how she was also competitive uh, she talks about it other artists her work in relationship to to other artists to drop out is such a almost apparently unnatural gesture, like something she had to do, but it was, as she says, the hardest work I've ever done. So this is another really uh, also violent gesture that she does to herself, like stopping uh, with art and, and retiring, which can be also considered as a work itself because this 33, 30, 29 years that she doesn't, I don't know, almost, that she doesn't produce art, could be even considered a performance like continuing the drop art piece. And her tombstone, when she dies, that has no writing, no inscription, it could be also considered in a way very coherent to the research throughout her bodies of words. You, you know, ought to have names. put a photo of his tomb, in fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Merci.